And joining us now is Jim Head. He's a professor of geological sciences at Brown University. Jim, this is obviously a, a pretty exciting moment for China, but I also imagine for people like you who follow this sort of thing, what, uh, what are you most curious about that's out there? What are you expecting or hoping uh, to see, learn, or discover from Zhurong's expedition? Well, we're all really excited about this because this is a scientific expedition, um, a very comparable to many of the ones that we're trying to do on other parts of Mars, but, but unique in its own right. For example, it landed in the northern lowlands, which is below what is believed to be an ancient shoreline. So it may be actually on the floor of an ancient billions of year old ocean. And we're very excited about that. We haven't really been in this area before like this. And it's got a lot of promise for fundamental scientific questions, like the origin of life, for example. What sort of things will Zhurong be looking for? Well, of course, I'm a geologist, so we'll be looking at the rocks for sure. And we can tell from the multispectral images, uh, uh, instruments, what these rocks are made of. And that's really important. Uh, is it sedimentary rocks? Is it a lava flow? Is it some combination of these? And of course, we'll be looking at the images to determine what, in fact, there could be fossils there. There could be fossils. So we've been looking for those, obviously, as well. In addition to that, the ground penetrating radar will give us an idea of whether there's ice, maybe a frozen ocean below. So this is very, very exciting, very, very exciting. I started out with Vikings 75 years ago, 45 years ago, and you know we couldn't move. We could just see, and now we can move, and this is just so wonderful. China is only the second country to go to Mars after the US. Why? Why is this expedition so difficult? Why do so few countries take it on? Well, I, it is really a difficult feat. There's no question about that. Um, you know, the Soviet Union landed robotic spacecraft uh, and returned samples and did other things with rovers on the moon, but this is a long distance away, and indeed, it is really hard to go through the atmosphere. I mean, you, you arrive at a very high rate of speed, and then you have to slow down and then have a parachute to descend you to the surface. Each of these steps is incredibly difficult. China, with the Chang'e 5 lunar mission just recently, has been, they really showed uh, the capabilities they have to go through a series of complex uh, tasks to really accomplish the scientific objectives. So it's, it's a real major, major accomplishment. I know you're a geologist. You said you're looking at the rocks. Many people are looking for signs of life. What, how would those signs appear? Well, we, we'll look at chemistry and mineralogy. There are several instruments on board that can help determine that. Uh, you know, for example, look for any kind of evidence of um, uh, unusual chemistry that is not really just related to rocks, but might be related to life. And also really for fossils, things like that. I mean, are there any evidence for things that might have lived in an ancient ocean? So these are the kinds of things we'll all be looking for in a substructure with the ground penetrating radar. This will tell us if there's bedded sediment, maybe buried ice, uh, maybe a frozen ocean. We just don't know, and that's that's why we're going. It's very exciting internationally and a great accomplishment for China. How important is what's happening now at this moment, this week, uh, in the global space race? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm a scientist, and, you know, scientists communicate all over the planet. I mean, that's the whole idea. You're trying to understand the unknown, and the unknown is huge. You know, we have all these planets out here. We have the history of the Earth. And so we collaborate internationally. It's really the way we accomplish things. So we're really excited about this. And sometimes international space races like the Soviet Union and the U.S. bring us some, of, some, some capabilities. But we really like to cooperate and collaborate. I work with my Chinese colleagues. We've talked about the potential landing sites on the moon, on Mars. And, you know, we hope to do all this together. There, are, there is competition, obviously. Um, but we, we hope it doesn't get in the way of really good uh, cooperation and collaboration because that's what it's all about, uh, teamwork to solve these really important problems. An exciting moment indeed. Jim Head from Brown University, thank you for joining us.